for joining us today. Uh, I've had people asking some questions about uh, using the marquee to create 3D documents, to isolate things out in 3D, uh, and uh, how to um, uh, basically uh, document using the marquee tool to create kind of live 3D sections, elevations, interior elevations. Um, let's go ahead and take a quick look at uh, the model here we're going to be looking at and what we're going to be documenting. Um, so this is kind of the kitchen area. If I take a quick spin around the model here in this room, I've got a lot of content in here I've been using to uh, do some renderings and some practice renderings and things like that. Uh, the cabinets have a certain level of detail that's worth documenting and even good enough to render out. Um, so if we uh, want to focus in on this kitchen and get this kitchen area documented uh, using a 3D document, we could do that really easily. We can isolate this kitchen out if we draw a marquee around it. Uh, and notice that marquee is kind of this bold dashed line. Uh, the marquee tool has a couple of settings. There's the light marquee, which will only isolate out this story. And there's the bold marquee that will isolate out all stories, so that it affects all stories. Uh, the geometry for that marquee, when I draw it, uh, can be a polygon, it can be a rectangle, or it can be a rotated rectangle. Uh, so once I've selected the marquee, I'm going to go to my filter and cut elements in 3D. That's under the view menu, under elements in 3D. Uh, I can adjust the surface settings. I can show what's inside the marquee or outside the marquee. Uh, trim elements to marquee obviously is checked. I can also isolate things out um, by element type or by story. Here again, I want to show all stories and what's inside the marquee. Okay, so now if I have that marquee in the right place and I'm ready to start documenting that kitchen space, uh, I can go to view uh, elements in 3D and show selection marquee in 3D. Uh, my shortcut for that is F4, um, but if we just isolate that out, um, we get that kitchen area. And notice it's cutting through all stories. Um, model's got a little bit of slop to it, but it gets the basic idea. Uh, if I decide that I want a little bit more of that room, I can come back into the floor plan here. Uh, again, grab my marquee tool, and I can move that marquee if I click inside of it. Or if I click outside the marquee, I can actually include more of the building uh, and redraw the marquee that way. Uh, and then again, hitting F4, I'm going to go back to the 3D, and you can see the change that's made there. Uh, looks like something's misaligned there. Oh, I moved the moved the content. Again, that's going to resize elements. So again, clicking undo. Uh, let's go ahead and redraw that marquee now. And F4. There we go. The marquee is going to move content if you move the marquee or click on some space and drag. Uh, so now that's correct. Everything's back to orthogonal and looks right. So now I want a view of this kitchen. Uh, and again, this is live to the model. This is all model content. Um, but if I want to snap a view of this kitchen, I can go to my view settings. If I go to parallel projection, uh, and let's set it to an elevation view, um, and I believe that we are to the right here. Oh, that's the wrong side. Then we get an actual elevation view of that kitchen. Um, and we can even go to view um, elements in 3D. Where is it at here? Look uh, perpendicular to clicked surfaces. That's what I was looking for. So if I go ahead and click on that, um, 3D navigation, look perpendicular to clicked surfaces, I can click on that and now I have a true 
uh, flat elevation that's tied to the 3D view. Uh, so I could save this as a view or as a 3D document, but really this is no different than a live section other than that I get the surfaces. So I want something a little more dynamic than this, so I'm going to go back to my parallel projection settings and change that to perspective and say OK. And now again, when I go to view, uh, 3D view, or sorry, uh, 3D navigation extras, uh, look perpendicular to click surfaces, I could still click on that back wall. Now this is all perpendicular to that angle, that back angle, the, cam the camera is perpendicular to that, but I still have the perspective here, which is, is kind of a cool feature. Now if I zoom in on this a little bit and get it correct on the screen, uh, now what I can do is I can go to Document, Document Tools, uh, New 3D Document. I'm going to create a 3D document of this. I'm going to, let's just call it Interior 1, Kitchen, Elevations. Now if we let that generate here, uh, we get that kitchen elevation, uh, which is super cool uh, that we can actually see this. We can dimension to it. So if I wanted to dimension my counter height here, I can dimension from here to here and pull a dimension off. Uh, hopefully I can get it off of there. So I know my counter height is three foot one. Uh, and I can get that dimension in the right spot and make some adjustments there. Uh, if I want to take a look at the cabinets and maybe I want that kind of reddish wood color, um, I can adjust the settings for that. Um, that's right here under surface color is what's controlling that. So if I go ahead and adjust that color right there, now my cabinets should show up in that burnt orange color. Um, and again, I could take it a step further if I wanted to show wood grain on that. I could add that in there. Maybe choose a custom pen for that. And let's add something that's going to work with that orangish color. Um, now that should be showing up, but if we go to our 3D document settings here, we can make some further adjustments. So let's go ahead and open up the 3D document settings. And again, that's that name we gave it. It's tied to the model. 3D projection, uh, we can redefine uh, the model element. We can turn on uh, vectoral hatching. We can change the uh, pen for uncut elements to a uniform pen. Uh, we can change the surface. If we didn't want the color, we could change it to a uniform pen for uh, uncut surfaces. Uh, we can add transparency into the model if we wanted to see through things. Uh, we could turn sun shadows on and adjust that shadow. Usually I use 12 and a half um, for the fill and a medium gray with no background. Gives kind of nice shadows. Um, so let's go ahead and say OK there and see what changes we get to that. So now I have that wood grain pattern here on all of the woods. Um, you can see the tile pattern on the floor now, the board pattern on the wood floor. Um, it just adds that much more detail. Uh, again, I can select the surface here, eyedroppering that and going to my surface settings. Um, oh, it grabs the, uh, the top of that. So let's see what the bottom of that surface is. So that's mahogany horizontal is the underside of that. Let's change that to uh, floorboards maple, for example. And then I can actually show the wood surface there on the, the ceiling. We could do the same thing here. Floorboards maple is going to show that wood surface. Um, so now I get some really cool uh, interior perspectives just using the marquee and saving this 3D view. I can label and annotate things in here. I can uh, grab the label tool, for example, and uh, label these cabinets. Uh, let's check out this label and see what's going on here. So that's just a text label, but if I grab that and change it to the ID label and call this upper cabinets, um, now this ID label here should reflect that. Uh, I can dimension all the way across here, add intermediate dimensions, um, and uh, actually document with the 3D document this way. So I don't necessarily have to have flat 2D um, uh, standard CAD documents. I can do some really cool things with 3D documents and add this to my sheets. Uh, if I add this to, um, let's say, permit set, um, 
materializations here. Um, this isn't well organized here because it was just a rendering file, but usually I'd have a folder in here for material elevations, and I could save the current view as the kitchen elevations. And now I have something that I can put onto a sheet and document with an actual number um, and, and call to it in floor plan with another marker, with a linked marker. Uh, so that's one way that the marquee really helps with, uh, with documenting. If you isolate things out and translate that isolated view into a 3D document, you can get some really cool documents.